You know, I get a lot of questions on YouTube about what makes a really good crispy fried hash brown. Ain't no telling how many bushels of taters I fried up before I figured it out, but I did figure it. Clarified butter, rinse them taters really well, and the lid's got to go on that skillet when you go to fry them. So come on, let's go make some. Folks, y'all heard me say that really big multiple syllable word for a cowboy, clarified butter. Now, to me, when you clarify butter, when you cook it down and you break them solids apart and that milk and stuff rises off there and you're going to separate that, then that butter taste and the flavor that isn't going to burn will help that hash brown get that golden crust, but whew, it is going to be so good. Go over about a medium high heat. It's not cold, it's not chilled, it's just right. We're gonna to toss her in there. When it goes to melting, you've got to stir it constantly because if you don't, you're gonna start burning that real quick. We're beginning to get a little bubble in here. Sure, our butter ain't completely melted, but we gotta to go to stirring now because if you don't, it's gonna burn. You're close and you'll see this. This is beginning to turn a different color in there where we're stirring. It's becoming clearer. These edges are going to froth up a little more on the outside while we're stirring this. You can see that when you clarify something, make it clear. So we can turn that heat out. Continue stirring while this stuff is boiling so it don't got a chance to sit there and burn. Now, next step, we got to have one of the fancy strainers. Nearly everybody got one of these. It's called a coffee cup and a coffee filter. I'm just going to mash it down in there just a tad and fold it over because we got to strain the solids off that butter. And you have to be a little careful here not to overflow your filter apparatus and give it time to soak on through there. And we'll just let it sit there and drain and we'll prep them taters here in just a second. All right, folks, remember russet potato so we'll just peel this thing and i think you'll notice if you look right over here there is a bowl already got some cool tap water run in it and then you're going to need you one of them cheese graters big side of the cheese grater not too little and we're going to grate him in that water and be careful not be getting your fingers down there in the grater hole it'll give yourself a manicure real quick it will one of the most important steps, I think, not only the clarified butter, is the rinsing of the potato to get that starch off of it. Now, we had clean water, and we had a clean tater, but when we look in here in just a minute, it's going to be sort of frothy and a little milky white. If Shannon look in here, you can see the color of that water. I want you to stir it around there with your fingers and make sure you get all them taters wet. Now. Everybody got one of these space helmets, they do. If you ain't, get you one because you're going to need it. We're going to strain that water out of there. Now, we're going to put it back in there. Run us a little more cool water right there on top. Stir them potatoes again. But if Shannon look back in here, the color of that water ain't as clear as I'd like it still just yet. What we're going to do? Run her back through the Martian space helmet one more time. You're going to want to do this, folks, three or four times until the water is clean. Right, now you see the difference here. This is about the fourth rinsing, and that's just clear as it can be. Give them a good shaking bake. And then take your hand, squish some of that water out there. You ain't going to hurt that tater. Just keep squishing him a little. All right. Now you can't do this next step on a paper towel. You got to have your tea towel, cup towel, lay it out there, dump your potatoes on there, fold it over one more time, it's in the middle, mash it. The paper towels won't work as well doing this because they won't get the moisture out that a cup towel will. We're going to fluff them up just a tad. This is important. Give them taters some air. Run her back down here to this end that didn't have no water on it yet. And we're going to mash them again. 
and you can see how they're light and fluffy now. They are good to go. And see that good white color you got in them taters? That's due to that rinsing. So let's get ready to fry those up some hash browns. Another important component here, cast iron skillet. Go ahead, let's get about a medium high heat again. Our clarified butter that we had, we're going to add about three tablespoons. Now, we're going to let that go till it just begins to bubble just a little. And we'll know that a iron is getting good and hot. But you want to make sure that this skillet is wet all the way around. There's a little bubble action beginning to take place. Get this hash brown. Try to put him right in the center if you can. I don't want to mash him plumb down, I just want to give him a little pat, and we're going to season him good. Now folks, you can see the thickness here is probably over a half inch closer to three quarters. You don't want to mash him where he's plumb flat like a pancake, but we need to get this lid on him because what's that lid doing? It's creating that steam effect, which is going to help them potatoes get done in the middle because we're going to have to flip him over here. We're going to let him go. About five minutes. Now, I know how bad you're wanting to, but don't do it. Do not take this lid off just yet while it's cooking. We're going to go about five minutes. You can go looking at that clock. About four and a half, we're probably going to take this lid off and have a look at it. But you take that off too quick, you lose that steam, that pressure that's helping the inside of that cook. So get away from the lid. All right, folks, we've been about four minutes and 59 seconds. As you can see, things is looking good. Now you got to sneak up on this like a covey of quail. You don't need to be putting the lid back on him this time because he is good to go. Go about two to three minutes on this side or when you begin to see that crisping around on them edges again and then it's, woo, hang on, I'm going to eat me some hash brown. One thing about cast iron, you can turn it off, it's still cooking just a minute till I get something out of my eye. Now, we didn't cook it maybe two minutes on this other side because it's done cooked three-fourths of the way through. Now you can put them on a wire rack or you can put them on a paper towel and just let them sit a minute. Look here. And there is crunch everywhere. Fine off. I don't know if y'all heard that folks, but that's what I call a crunch. This is some good hash brown. Remember, follow them tips. You can do this at home, ain't nothing to it. We thank you so much for stopping by the kitchen today, me and the Beagle and Frank and Shen, and we appreciate you watching our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. God bless you each and every one, and it's hash brown day.